This may just be the best monitor I've ever reviewed. In fact, don't worry about my face. Have a look at this. 32 inches, 4K at 240Hz, or with its unique dual mode at 1080p, it can hit a massive 480Hz. It is OLED, so we're looking at 0.03 millisecond response times. VRI is taken care of by G-Sync compatibility, and also we get FreeSync Premium Pro. This thing is genuinely shaping up to be the ultimate gaming monitor. So as I metaphorically and literally roll up my sleeves, let me tell you everything you need to know about this and also whether it's actually worth buying. Okay, so normally at this point, I will be calling it. It's the best monitor I've ever tested and possibly the best overall monitor you can buy. Thing is, it's not the only show in town because there's this new wave of 4K, 32 inch, 240 Hz OLED displays using W OLED like we have here or QD OLED all coming out over the next few months, all fairly similarly priced. So on paper, the LG has some pretty stiff competition, but it does have a couple of twigs up. Couple, <laughs> couple of twigs up its sleeve? That'd be delicious. Couple of tricks up its sleeve. Versus the Asus, uh, which I have here, and I'll be reviewing, as I say, properly in a few days. This was not a good idea to pick that up because that's also 32 inches. Uh, versus that, we have obviously the dual mode, 480 hertz at 1080p. None of the rivals offer that. We get some surprisingly good sounding speakers. You can also rotate it 90 degrees and have it in portrait mode. We get slimmer bezels and a very nice anti-glare matte screen coating, so it's a lot less reflective. On the other hand, the ROG can sustain high brightness, particularly in HDR, thanks to its custom heatsink. It also gets a couple of extra ports, including USB-C with power delivery, so you can plug in your laptop more easily. It has Dolby Vision, although coming via a software update later this year, and also a uniform brightness mode, plus this screw mount on top, which is handy for adding light bars or streaming cameras. And the ASUS is also using a QD OLED panel versus the LG's W OLED, but more on that in a second. Alienware has something similar with QD OLED with Dolby Vision and a curve for some reason. I thought we'd all agreed we moved on from that, but nope, curve screen right there. And then there's the MSI one, which is meant to be a little bit more affordable. Although in the UK, it seems to be the same price as the LG. So it kind of depends what you want from the screen. And it's great that we have so many options. And hopefully over time, this will drive prices down as well, because I remember the uh, Alienware QD OLED ultra wide like a year ago. It was the only one with that panel. Everyone wanted one, so it was impossible to find. The prices uh, stayed high forever. Hopefully, because we have four very similar options, each with their own little pros and cons, you know, over the next few months, we may see prices drop a little bit. How much is it, you ask? Well, in the US, it's $1,399, $1,400, essentially, uh, before sales tax. And in the UK, it's probably going to be about £1,350. A lot of money, but I would argue for the spec, it's not that bad. Although certainly, this is still very much for the enthusiast market. But let's talk about LG's party trick, the dual mode. So 4K at 240Hz or 480Hz at 1080p. Although my problem, I think, before I even dive in, I don't think I can perceive 360 up to 480. You might be able to, but certainly it's not the same jump as, you know, 120 to 240 or even just 240 to 360. 480 and these eSports levels of high refresh rates are very much for the young athletic professionals, which I am not. Anyway, simply tap this button on the base of the screen and it switches to 480Hz 1080p. And that's still with a 0.03 millisecond grade to grade response time, which should make this fantastic for esports. Now, obviously, 1080p is a little bit grainy, quite grainy on a 32 inch screen, although it is less noticeable in games. And if you can get close to 480 FPS in your games, and that is a big if, particularly for competitive shooters, the responsiveness is just insane. It is definitely a bit overkill for less twitchy games. And you know, 240 FPS at 4K is still plenty smooth enough. Although that is itself a challenge to get 240 frames per second at 4K in your games, particularly new AAA titles, uh, even with DLSS. Although CS2 and Rainbow Six Siege and League of Legends, you're not gonna have a problem there. Well, I say that running on a 4090, it's gonna depend on your setup. But still, having super high hertz feature proves you by giving you extra headroom for when you do upgrade your system down the line. Also, if you have ever dabbled in esports or professional gaming, you will know that none of them use 32 inch monitors because it's just, you know, too much real estate for your eyes to dart around. They prefer 25, 24 inch monitors. Well, LG thought of this and have included cropped 24 and 27 inch modes. But for whatever reason, it looks even more grainy than at 32 inches. So I'm not sure I would recommend using it that way. I must admit, I do love the look of this thing though, with the fairly low profile stand. Uh, the only thing that really makes this like gamery is the 
RGB lighting on the back, but you can also turn that off. This would look fine at your office, although the accounts team may have a few questions on why you spent $1,400 on this. But it has tons of flexibility, really nice and thin bezels. Those built-in speakers, as I say, are actually really good. Not too much screen wobble. We've got a little cutout at the back here for your cables, so you're not seeing anything in front. Uh, really easy to put together. It's just like slotting in and tightening it. No screwdriver required. Uh, my only criticism, I think, is that it is plastic, this base. It's not like a metallic stand, which reduces the weight, making it a little bit easier to, I don't know, shift around, but not the most premium stand. We get a joystick for controlling the OSD, which is nice and easy to use. And of course, we have that dual mode button as well. In terms of I.O., we have two HDMI 2.1s, so you can plug that into your graphics card or your console, plus a DisplayPort 1.4 with DSC, which unlocks the full 4K 240Hz, and also a couple of USB 3 Type A's. To be honest, this is one of my main criticisms because as someone who regularly uses a MacBook or laptops that don't have an HDMI port, uh, not just always my desktop PC, I would have loved to have seen a USB-C Thunderbolt uh, or you know USB 4 Type-C port on this guy. The ASUS has it, I think a couple of the other ones may have it, but not on the LG, which I think is a bit of a shame because this is ideal both for gaming and for you know a workstation productivity use as well because it's such a lovely screen. So USB-C would have been nice. But anyway, enough waffling. What about the image quality? This is the most important thing. Well, first off, it is OLED. So unlike regular backlit screens, it can turn each pixel off individually, meaning blacks are deep, shadows are really detailed, colors look brighter, and we get those ultra low response times. And so 4K gaming and 4K movies look absolutely incredible on this. And personally, 32 inches is my perfect size. I know 27 is arguably a bit more of a sweet spot, especially when it comes to price, but this size just makes everything feel more immersive. And you've just got extra room if you're having a couple of apps side by side. Without doubt, it's the best size to take full advantage of 4K. But HDR is where this thing really shines, with higher brightness, uh, deeper blacks, richer colors. It is rated for Display HDR True Black 400, and we do get basic HDR10 support, although sadly no Dolby Vision, which is kind of annoying, especially as their TV support it. However, alongside the ASUS ROG monitor, the differences are obvious. The anti-glare matte coating on this LG gives you a slightly flatter and, well, much less reflective picture than the semi-gloss ASUS. And while there are pros and cons to both, I'd say the ASUS does have punchier colors, which I do prefer, and it gets a bit brighter, and it avoids the slightly dirty look you get on bright areas with the LG's matte coating. Can we get really nerdy just for a second? Because this is using a W OLED panel, which means it has an extra white LED, while QD OLEDs, like we have on the ROG, have a quantum dot layer to boost color accuracy and brightness. So LG have added an MLA Plus layer, which we've seen from their most recent TVs, to boost the brightness here instead. And both this and the ROG averaged around 1,000 to 1,100 nits of HDR peak brightness on a 10% white window, which is very impressive for an OLED. But while the ROG managed to maintain this, the LGs did drop to around 875 or so nits after a couple of minutes. And side by side, it is noticeable in movies and games. Highlights like these clouds were regularly a couple of hundred nits brighter on the ASUS, and you could see the difference. On a 100% full white screen though, which would be like say having your Google Docs open, both sustained around 550 to 600 nits. And finally, in my color accuracy test, this hit 100% of the sRGB, 95% of the P3, and 87% of the Adobe RGB color gamuts. Meaning it'll be great for working with photos and videos as well, although I wouldn't say it's a professional level of accuracy. And it is just a hair behind the ROG though, but there's not much in it. For gaming though, it's hard to beat this. And while I do like the more glossy, you know, inkier colors of the ASUS, the ROG monitor, there is something to be said about the more sort of painted on look that you get with a matte screen like this. And if you have a console, it looks just as good. Although most games are still sort of 60 FPS though, there's only a handful that are 120. And certainly no 240 or 480 Hertz games, maybe with the PS5 Pro, but probably not. The thing is though, I don't know if I'd ever use the dual mode and turning it into 480Hz at 1080p because, well, obviously firstly I'm not an esports gamer and I think professional gamers are more likely to buy a 25 inch, maybe even 500 or 540Hz monitors that exist these days. I'd say this is less for professional use and more just high-end enthusiasts like myself. But to be honest, the whole point of you know spending $1,400 is to get the 32 inches and the 4K and that 240Hz, even if you can't quite you know top that out. I guess there's nothing wrong with having the option and it is something that sets it apart from the competitors, but personally I don't see too much value in that 480Hz option. 
If you're anything like me though, you're going to be using this for both gaming and work. I do a lot of photo and video editing, and does this make a good work monitor? Well, yeah, actually. The good news is that while this is using a WOLED panel, which historically haven't been the best, especially if you've got text or fine detail, they've often been quite pixelated, it wasn't like the best type of OLED panel, well this is a second gen W OLED, and it doesn't have any of those issues. Now obviously any OLED comes with worry of burn-in, but to counter that, LG have the usual set of mitigation features like logo dimming and pixel cleaning, and LG do offer a two-year warranty on the panel, including for burn-in. I tell you what, I don't really give scores on this channel, but if I were to rate this out of 10, you know, the specs, the feature, my experience using it for the last couple of weeks, and the price, keeping that in mind as well, I'd give it like a 9.7. I think if it had a USB Type-C port, then probably 9.9. The only thing remaining is to fully review the ROG and then maybe the MSI and Alienware as well to see out of the four, and maybe there are other ones as well, but out of those you know, new wave of 32 inch, 240, 4K OLED displays, how the LG compares. But certainly with that 480Hz feature, which maybe I'm not gonna get that much use out of myself, but maybe you will, that could be easily the deciding factor for you. But what do you think? Do you like the idea of this? Would you use 480Hz as well or not so much? Let me know what you make of the LG in the comments below. If you do fancy checking this out for yourself and pre-ordering one, which you can now, I will leave a link in the description below. And that's about it. Stay tuned for my ROG review coming in a few days and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.